welcome back to my channel planty princess my name is ashley today i am finally going to be repotting some hoyas in the diy pond that i just made if you didn't see that video i will link it up the top you guys definitely go check that out so you can learn a little bit about what pond is how to use it and also enter into my pink princess philodendron giveaway without any further ado i have five hoyas here that i want to get potted up and like I mentioned, we're going to be doing that into pawn. So I'm going to be using these little, technically I guess they're called orchid pots. They have the slits in the sides. Now, some of the smaller rocks will kind of fall out of the bottom, so I will be keeping them. Right now I have this for when I water, so I can just keep them all in this one till they, you know, soak up some of that water. But I will be keeping them in little smaller trays. So, the little rocks might slip out, but after the first couple get out, the bigger rocks will kind of cover up those holes and not let any of those really teeny little rocks escape. So I'm not really too worried about that. And like I said, they will be sitting in saucers, so it's not like they're really going to get all over the place. Anyways, let me just run through real quick and I'll show you the Hoyas that I'm going to be potting up today. So they were in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet and sphagnum starting to root. Every single one of them has pushed out some new growth. I haven't checked the roots yet, but in these ones that are in the cups, I can kind of see roots coming out through the sphagnum moss. So that's also super exciting. That's another reason why I like to use these clear pots because you can kind of see through some of that stuff. And if the roots come to the edge of the pot, you can see them. It's a little harder. It's going to be a little harder to see the roots through the pond. But like I said, when they start to come towards the edges, it will be very easy to identify them and spot them and kind of check on them and see how they're doing. So anyways, we have at the top here, we have a Hoya Mathilde Splash. Down at the bottom, I have a Hoya Macrophylla Pot of Gold. Here I have the Hoya Kenjiana Inner Variegata, which is super gorgeous. It's like one of my top wishlist Hoyas. I did get two of them. The other one ended up dying. As you see, it's not in here anymore with this. I also have a little wet stick in there that I'm pretty sure is all dried up and dead, but I just can't throw it away until it like mushes up for fear something might pop out of it, even though I know deep down inside it is dead, a goner, but that's okay. Then I have my Hoya Rangsang and another Hoya Macrophylla Pot of Gold. So, we will get started. We'll check on the roots, see how they're doing. I'll start with the two that are in the cup just because I think they'll be the easiest. And I'm just gonna kind of carefully squeeze these to loosen up the sphagnum and pull them out of here. Actually, I'm gonna put the sphagnum in these empty slots over here. Now I kept these pretty moist, um, not like sopping wet, but definitely definitely moist so that way they would root also because it was in like a little greenhouse the humidity was up so they didn't dry out too fast and the higher humidity also does help the rooting process as well as the growth process especially for Hoyas this is going to be a little hard to get these out of here another really great way to get Hoyas out of sphagnum is to soak them in water it kind of loosens up the sphagnum, but I might be okay just kind of peeling it off like this. All right, we're definitely gonna have to soak these. So I'm gonna go get these unpacked from the sphagnum and then I'll be right back to kind of share them with you guys, show you the progress of the roots and all that good stuff. Okay. So I am back. I rinsed off all the roots and I am like excited ecstatic i mean literally ecstatic of how well these plants have grown how well they have rooted i am so excited to share them with you and show you the progress so i'll start with the hoya kenjiana inner variegata just because it has rooted the least and then i'll show you the better roots it definitely has started to root in quite a few places along the whole stem as you see here and it also has started to grow in a couple nodes it's growing on this node here 
as well as starting to get some growth down at that node there, this one, but it's very minimal, it's just a little bump. And then also at the top node here, you can see some growth coming in there as well. So it definitely is rooting, which is a big plus, and there are new leaves coming in. So this one is going to do just fine. Now this is the Hoya Mathilde. You can see already those luscious roots. So gorgeous. The two new leaves and the new stem coming out of it. The new tendril, I should say. Gorgeous. Now we have the two Hoya Macrophylla pots of gold. We'll show you this one. This little guy has just started to root, but it's doing very well. And it has pushed out this new leaf and this new tendril. This other leaf is getting ready to go, but I'm going to leave it on for as long as it's gonna hang on because although the tip is really crispy and brown, the bottom half of the leaf is still very healthy and green and still absorbing some energy for the plant. When it's ready, it will start to yellow so the plant can take all the sugar and nutrients that it needs from that last leaf and it will die off. The second one, look at those luscious roots. That is crazy. That is like a head of curly hair roots. It also has a new tendril and two new leaves coming in at the very tip there. So I'm excited to see what those leaves are gonna look like. And last but not least, we have the Hoya Rangsen that had one leaf when I got it. So this is its newest leaf. And again, another tendril kind of poking in there and the roots, another gorgeous, luscious set of roots growing in. So these are all going to be perfectly fine getting transplanted or potted up at this point. Um, even if they didn't really have roots, like this one barely has any, but it still does. You can still see that some are coming in various spots. Even if it didn't have any roots because it's showing new signs of growth, I would probably still pot it up, especially because it's not going into soil. It's going into something that's very porous and maintains a lot of water. So it would still do very well rooting in that medium. But luckily the roots are already started, so we're good to go. I did pre-rinse my pond. It is very dusty, like Lekka kind of gets very muggy, kind of black dust that kind of comes off of all this stuff. So you definitely want to make sure you rinse it. So I rinsed it all off. Then I kind of boiled it. I brought it to a boil, let it sit for two, three minutes. And then I rinsed it off a second time, but I did it by little portions. That way I wasn't just dumping in the whole thing and kind of missing the big chunks in the middle. So I scooped a little bit at a time, rinsed it off, dumped it back into this bowl that way. I didn't miss any and I wasn't sifting the the dust that was still left at the top layer down through the rest of the rocks. So definitely make sure you pre-wash this. In my video where I made it, I said that I was going to do it, but it's really up to you. At this point, now that I did it and saw how dirty and musty the water gets, I would definitely 100% recommend doing that before you put any plants into this. But again, it is still up to you, of course. I would just highly recommend doing that for the best benefit and best success rate for your plant. So let's stop jabbering and get these plants in here. Because this one's so tall, I'm not really going to put a bottom layer on this one. This one's kind of going to sit a little awkward. It's going to sort of be like this until it starts to grow. I'll have to make a trellis for it. That way it can kind of grow up the trellis and not just be like so wonky and weird so we'll just go ahead and pour some pawn in here also if you do bring it to a boil uh, I rinse it off with cold water but you also want to make sure it cools down before you put it in here because there are minerals and they're porous they absorb that water and the heat as well so you definitely don't want to burn the stems roots leaves anything of your plant so you just want to make sure that you cool it off before putting it in contact with your plant so I think that is definitely so cute now the rocks are are already wet so I technically don't have to water anything 
but because I do want to get a little bit of um, fertilizer in there I am going to give them a little squirt of my liquid dart mixed water I have liquid dart as well as super thrive in here so I'm gonna just give them a little drizzle to kind of sift through the rocks and kind of just give it a little head start a little boost to getting some of those nutrients that the plants need. And we have the first pot of gold. I definitely am really loving the way this looks. second pot of gold and as you see when I first put it in I kind of just like shake it as I'm putting it in that way any of the smaller rocks that are going to fall out through the hole kind of already do it back into my container here nothing's falling out so it's really not a big worry either the holes really are not that large for you know especially the bigger rocks to fall out even though none of these rocks are really too large but I just kind of go like that so anything that is going to fall out kind of just gets out of there right from the beginning so here we have the ring sen queen ring sen last but not least we have the hoya mat filled splash these are definitely going to look really cute once they kind of get a little bit bigger have chalices if they need them and i cannot wait to see especially like the kenjiana because it has such a long tendril on a trellis i think it's just going to look adorable Oh, I am a filled. Super cute. So that is all five of my Hoyas that I was currently rooting in sphagnum all potted up. I'm just going to drizzle, like I said, just a tiny bit to kind of get the nutrients in there. They don't need too much since they obviously are already wet because I just pre-washed them. But that's all right you can also pre-wash them you know a night before let them dry out a little bit that way if you're worried that you're going to overwater, that's up to you like i said this does in my um diy pond video that this is a perfect pretty ideal ratio from air to water 45 percent air 55 percent water so it is very porous it will dry out pretty fast of course depending on the sunlight and the humidity and the temperature that you keep it in will depend how fast you that it dries out and how often you need to water it but in general it shouldn't it shouldn't stay wet too long but long enough that it gives your hoyas or any of your other plants a nice good drink thorough watering and then a nice gap of airflow to their roots thank you guys again for joining me in another video i hope you enjoyed kind of seeing the hoyas that i put in pond today and i hope you try to make your own pond definitely let me know what you used how it goes and if your plants like it in the comments down below don't forget to check out that last video and enter in my giveaway by commenting on my planty princess shirt also don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you're interested in the content i provide and every plant's a princess bye